But first tonight, is negotiating with Putin okay or not? We asked this question sincerely a few weeks ago. Even the mention of negotiation or a settlement with Putin over Ukraine earned you the title of Moscow puppet. Even President Biden said niet to any type of negotiation. That was the standard. No negotiation, no peace talks, no land swaps in Ukraine. That's it. Imagine the world's surprise when President Biden said something very different today, standing next to the French president. I'm prepared to speak with Mr. Putin if, in fact, there is an interest in him deciding he's looking for a way to end the war. He hasn't done that yet. If that's the case, in consultation with my French and my NATO friends, I'll be happy to sit down with Putin to see what he wants, has in mind. I'm not an expert, but I did spend four years in the Middle East as a war correspondent, six years in Washington, much of it covering the White House. Again, I'm not an expert. But that sounds an awful lot like offering to negotiate. Better put, if it's not an offer to negotiate, what is it? Which is very different than what the president's national security spokesman said last month. Zelensky gets to determine if and when he's ready for negotiations, according to John Kirby, what those negotiations look like. Nobody from the United States is pushing, prodding, or nudging him to the table. If you are confused, imagine what Vladimir Putin is thinking. It's a big change from a few months ago, even a few days ago. War criminal. War criminal. I think he is a war criminal. Declares war and commits genocide. Yes, I call it genocide. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. And now the whiplash, we're ready to negotiate. Which is it? Putin can remain in power, or is it time to negotiate? The stakes could not be higher. And our president clearly can't decide what his strategy is. Michael Waltz is here, congressman from Florida, former Green Beret, counterterrorism advisor to Vice President uh, Dick Cheney. I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm wondering if you understand what U.S. policy is here. You know, this is just one additional or you know, one more confusion, Leland, right? Because he's also in contravention to standing policy said that we will militarily defend Taiwan. Uh, and if you remember from the Afghanistan debacle, I think one of the main reasons that that happened is we were negotiating directly with the Taliban and cutting out the government. So I think if anybody is to be alarmed tonight, it should be Zelensky. Uh, and I wonder if they got a heads up on this major policy change. I was able to meet with Zelensky back in July, and he made it very clear that the Ukrainian people would not support him uh, going to the negotiating table until they had expelled Russia from their territory. Now, he was somewhat circumspect on whether that included Crimea, but he was very clear on the rest of Ukraine, the Russians had to go. So, uh, you know, this kind of mixed signal uh, is is extremely unhelpful, and it reduces uh, and undermines the credibility of the presidency. It, it was emboldening. It has to be emboldening to Vladimir Putin. And I, I'm wondering sort of how how our both our adversaries, but also our allies, view this. Because the same day that we announced that we're ready to train uh, more Ukrainian troops and give them uh, more sophisticated training, now the president's saying that he's willing to talk and negotiate as if he speaks for for Ukraine. I don't get it. Yeah, right. And that's why that's why this kind of mixed signal is so is so dangerous. And then you know we also have shaky European support as they head into a very uh, cold and energy deprived uh, winter, which is exactly what Putin's counting on. And meanwhile. You have millions of Ukrainians that are literally sitting in the dark and the cold and, and cold. So uh, it, 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 this is just completely discordant. It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and I have to tell you, you know, at the same time as we are thinking about how long we're going to support uh, the Ukrainians in Congress, uh, it, it, it also make, makes sense. The final thing, Leland, you know, a lot of people would say, well, what's wrong with saying I might negotiate? And I think what you what you have to understand is that Putin will say and do anything he needs to to buy time. Going to the negotiating table now basically hits a pause 
so that he can lick his wounds and be right back at it. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.